Hello everyone, I am the Meta Kirby, and welcome to my channel, The Commander Tavern. The Commander Tavern is a channel dedicated to my favorite Magic the Gathering format. The Brewery is a series on this channel showcasing my spicy brews under the deck text. On this episode of The Brewery, I'll be discussing my take on a commander from the Innistrad Midnight Hunt pre-cons, Will Held the Rock Cleaver. If you like this deck or any of the cards I'll be mentioning throughout the video, please consider using my TCG Player affiliate link when purchasing those cards. You can find that link down in the description. It'll really help out the channel. The best way you can help support the channel is with my Patreon. For just $1, patrons get early access to certain videos on YouTube. In fact, patrons got a chance to see this video earlier. You can also support my channel for free by simply liking, subscribing, and sharing, which also helps out a lot. You can join my Discord server for free if you want to join the Commander Tavern community. All pertinent links are down in the description. Alright, let's get back to the episode. Wilhelt is a 3-3 zombie warrior for 2 generic, 1 blue, and 1 black. He has 2 triggered abilities. The first one creates a 2-2 black zombie creature token with decayed whenever a zombie you control dies as long as it didn't have decayed. Essentially, Wilhelt helps you recycle your zombies with decayed ones, sort of like re-reanimating the dead. Decay is a nerf mechanic, but at least it's super flavorful. His second triggered ability synergizes with the first one because you can choose to sacrifice a zombie at the beginning of your end step in order to draw a card. And if that zombie didn't have decay, then you create a 2-2 zombie token that does. So there's definitely plenty of things you can do with this zombie tribal commander, since he seems to be a revolving door for zombies. First and foremost, Wilhelm was clearly designed with zombie tribal in mind. Not that he has to necessarily be stitched onto a zombie tribal deck, pun intended, since you can also build an aristocrats and or combo deck with him at the helm. Since those types of strategies aren't necessarily disjoint, we can build a zombie tribal deck that can win via combo as well as an aristocratic strategy in case horde beatdown doesn't work. So let's see the zombie lords of the deck since plan A is creating an overwhelming horde. Undead Warchief, Blade Stitch Scab, Death Baron, Lord of the Accursed, Narfi Betrayer King, Risen Executioner, Liliana's Mastery, and Coat of Arms are mainly just for pumping our zombies. Since these creatures are also zombies, they pump each other even if they can't really pump themselves. The enchantment has the added bonus of creating two 2-2 two -two zombies tokens which get pumped by the enchantment. So a plus one plus one zombie pump with six damage on the board for just five mana is pretty solid, especially since it's not easy to get rid of enchantments. Coat of Arms is amazing in a tribal deck, but be wary when facing other tribal decks, especially since the tribal archetype is the most popular commander archetype amongst casual players. While these lords also have some perks to them, those are just bonuses since they're mainly used to pump our zombies. Other lords like Death Priest of Merkel, Liliana's Devotee, and Cemetery Reaper also pump our zombies but synergize further with the deck since the first two give us the option of creating a creature token at the end of our turn if a creature died, for a small price at least. The latter can create a 2-2 zombie token while also exiling a creature card from a graveyard. So these lords tie with the aristocratic aspect of the deck, which we'll see even more of in a moment especially with the rest of the pumping lords like Diagraph Captain, Lord of the Undead, and Tomb Tyrant. With the Captain, we can clearly see where we're going with the deck. All of our actions overlap with each other. We can attack with total abandon because either our zombies get through, or they kill off blockers, or if they die, they'll still hurt our opponents. The last two also help in that regard since we can potentially recover any zombies that either died in combat or were sacrificed to pay for activated abilities from our aristocrat effects. So as I mentioned earlier, the deck is able to do it all with these cards that have overlapping synergies. Unholy Glorado does something similar to Lord of the Undead, but the zombie card goes to the top of your library. So you can do this in response to drawing a card if you really need to get that zombie card into your hand. Gleaming Overseer, Vizier of the Scorpion, and Zombie Master are some more lords that give our zombies keyword abilities even if they don't provide strict pumps. These are still amazing keywords to get even if the first two only apply to our zombie tokens. However, they're still great keywords for some form of evasion. The Vizier especially, along with the previously mentioned Death Baron, since they guarantee our blocked creatures kill whatever blocked them, putting opponents in difficult positions. As for Zombie Master, as long as we control Urborg Tomb of Yawgmoth, then all of our zombies are 100% unblockable, allowing for game-ending alpha strikes. Cabal Coffers is also included to take advantage of Urborg, but we'll see the mana acceleration of the deck later on near the end. The important thing is that all of these cards work well on their own and when combined with each other. Crypt Breaker and Grave Spawn Sovereign are some more zombie lords, but they don't pump nor give other boons, but have amazing abilities since we can tap down zombies for value. These zombies don't even need to have haste since tapping them is part of the activation cost. So any zombies we didn't attack with, we can tap down at the beginning of the end step before our turn for value. Being able to draw a ton of cards off of the amount of zombies we control can add up very quickly, but we'll see those effects soon enough. Being able to reanimate creatures by just tapping down 5 zombies also provides some epic combo lines when done with other creatures and effects in the deck, but we'll see those in a bit. As already discussed, since we're also being sacrificing creatures for value or putting them in danger to have them die, this overlaps wonderfully with the multiple aristocrat effects in the deck, along with the very few others already discussed. 
So first let's see how we can use these effects to amass our horde and then see whatever value we can get from them. Cleaver Scab and Gukala Gisa are just crazy good in this deck, especially when combined with the previously mentioned Grave Spawn Sovereign. The former can sacrifice a zombie in order to create two copies of that zombie. This is just ridiculously good here, even if we just use it on tokens. In response to blocks, we can sacrifice a tap token and create two blockers. That's just the floor of this ability, but we can clone our zombie lords or other value zombies for just three and tapping. With all of the reanimation effects in the deck, we can even get that original zombie back and continue for further value. Or we could just sacrifice one of the clones to keep getting more. With Gissa, we can sacrifice a zombie creature token that has been pumped to high numbers and then get that many zombie tokens of each power. So if we sacrifice a 7-7 zombie token, we'll get 7-7-7 seven, seven, seven zombie tokens, essentially multiplying its power sevenfold. Or if we sacrifice a huge non-token creature, we can then tap down those tokens with Grave Spawn Sovereign to get the creature back. As I mentioned in the beginning, this deck is essentially a revolving door between the graveyard and the battlefield along with being able to amass a huge horde of huge zombies. Crowded Crypt can also do something similar but it has to be sacrificed to get the zombies. That being said, getting a counter for each creature we control dying and then getting us that many 2-2 zombie tokens with decay can be quite the game ender. It's also a mana rock that doesn't enter the battlefield tapped for just 3 mana so it technically doesn't take up a slot in the deck either since we can use it for value before we pop it. Liliana's Reaver and One of Orcus are some more synergistic ways of creating zombie tokens. Each of these require getting through to deal combat damage to the opponent, but once we do, we can reap the benefits. They are especially amazing due to Death Touch, so if an opponent wants to block to prevent the effect, whatever they block with will die. Grave Titan and Lucille are similar but they trigger on attack and not combat damage, so I feel like they are slightly better than the previously two in that regard. The Titan is a huge beater that puts two zombie tokens onto the battlefield and it also has Death Touch as if its sixth power wasn't enough. Lucille provides some form of evasion with Menace while also giving a relevant pump at plus 2 plus 0. It forces a sacrifice upon attack which is great against Voltron strategies but at the very least removes a potential blocker even before the blocker step. And then you create a 2-2 zombie creature token. If you're still upset at Wizards for the Walking Dead secret lair then that's your prerogative and I respect that. So you don't have to run Lucille if you're so against it. But as immersion breaking as it is, the fact remains that it's a great card in this deck. So consider proxying with a custom Watsi IP inspired card if that's your preference. As for more ways of creating zombie tokens, you can't go wrong with Tainted Adversary, Empty the Pits, Dark Salvation, and Army of the Damned. These standalone zombie generators don't really synergize with any other strategy beyond massively expanding our zombie horde, but we still need zombies to pump. We can't just have lords on the battlefield pumping themselves, they need an army, so these mana sinks do the job. Others include Endless Ranks of the Dead and Field of the Dead. While the land won't ever make as many tokens as effectively as the enchantment, it doesn't take up a slot in the deck anyways, even if the deck's land base is not 100% singleton. The enchantment does create an insane amount of zombie tokens when left of check though, so it'll accumulate exponential value over the turns, no one does anything about it, or if you're able to consistently protect your board state, which being blue, you can already imagine we can do so thanks to the counter magic suite in the deck, which we'll see soon enough. The rest of the aristocrat effects in the deck are pure to the archetype in terms of hurting opponents by damaging them or getting rid of their creatures as well as benefiting us like drawing cards and whatnot. Speaking of, Liliana Dreadhorde General, Erebos Bleak Hearted, Undead Augur, and Dark Prophecy do just that. Each creature we control that dies will trigger these effects and we get to draw cards. We do have to pay life with the enchantments but 2 life to Erebos and 1 life to the Prophecy isn't much to gain through our deck. The deck is black after all. Liliana is also a crazy good planeswalker here anyways since all of her abilities are relevant. We draw cards from a triggered ability, we create zombie tokens with her plus one, we have the table sacrifice creatures which also benefits us, and her ultimate is just icing on the cake to ensure our horde can alpha strike the table to oblivion. Plague Vulture and Vengeful Dead use those zombie deaths to cut the table with a thousand cuts. Each zombie we control that dies will hit all opponents for one. Not only is this good to slowly but surely kill off the table with our deck just doing what it does best, but if included as a combo piece to some combos already in the deck that work well on their own, it's an instantaneous game over. For example, the classic Gravecrawler and Phyrexian Altar combo. Both Plague Vulture and Vengeful Dead are zombies, so with either of them on the battlefield, we can sacrifice Gravecrawler for one black mana to the altar, we can then use that mana to recast it from the graveyard. We can do this indefinitely many times. Each time we sacrifice it, either zombie will ping the table for one until they die. And the best part of these two cards is that they work well on their own as well. Gravecrawler is amazing to attack with when pumped but it's also amazing sacrifice fodder to other effects in the deck. The altar is a no brainer since you can sacrifice any amount of zombies to get the mana needed to fuel a larger spell. They're also good here on their own and then end the game when together. 
thus the perfect cards for this deck. Same with Poppet Stitcher. While we can create a 2-2 zombie token with Decayed whenever we cast an instant or sorcery spell, that's not the main reason for running it. At the beginning of our upkeep, if we control 3 or more creature tokens, which is pretty much child's play with this deck, it transforms into Poppet Factory. This is the side we want. Since it removes all abilities from creature tokens we control, any zombies we have with Decay will lose Decay. Why is that so amazing? Because Will Halt only triggers if the zombie that died did not have Decay. So with any free sacrifice outlet like Phyrexian Altar, we can sacrifice a zombie token that won't have Decay to the altar. That'll trigger Will Halt creating a 2-2 zombie token with Decay that's going to lose Decay because of the Poppet Factory. We can then continue sacrificing tokens created by the Hill Will Halt this way to get infinite mana. However, with either Plague Vulture or Vengeful Dead on the battlefield, we end the game. Even if we don't have them yet, if we had either draw effect, we can continue drawing into our library from each zombie sacrifice until we find our game ending pieces. Then with all that mana we can just cast it and win. Or we can possibly draw into another game ending combo in the deck, Acerarak the Arch Lich and Rooftop Storm. Two more cards that work well on their own in the deck but are game ending when put together. Not only will the enchantment make all of our zombies cost 0 to cast, but making Acerarak cost 0 means we can venture infinitely many times into any dungeon so long as it's not Tomb of Annihilation. So venturing infinitely many times into Lost Mine of Phandelver means draining the entire table each time we venture through Dark Pool. Doing that infinitely many times is game over. Just be careful not to deck yourself when doing so since Temple of Dumathoin has you draw a card each time you complete the dungeon. Going back to the other aristocrat cards in the deck, Corpse Harvester and Deathmark Prelate provide amazing value. The former can be used to search your library for any zombie card and swamp card, allowing you to get any combo piece you might need, as well as any double typed land. The latter can be used to kill off creatures all while providing a sacrifice outlet. Unfortunately, you can only do that at sorcery speed. Noxious Ghoul and Ravenous Rotbelly also provide advantage but from Enter the Battlefield triggers. The former can very easily wipe the board of all non-zombie creatures if you create enough zombie tokens that turn. The latter can be quite busted if you're able to consistently duplicate it with Cleaver Scab or sacrifice it and reanimate it. While on the topic of Aristocrats, you know I had to include my two favorite mono black enchantments, Dictate of Erebos and Grave Pact. Once you have a good token sacrifice engine going, you can very easily start wiping the board as a side effect which also serves to pave the way to send all of your zombies towards your opponent's brains. Empty the Laboratory, the last card in the section, not only serves as an epic mana sink sacrifice outlet, but if you sacrifice enough zombies and pay enough for the X, you can essentially cheat a ton of zombies straight from your library. This can be quite the game changer in the mid to late game. The following cards in the deck are the essential card advantage, responses, and mana acceleration of any deck. In terms of card advantage, you can synergistically draw a ton of cards each upkeep with Graveborn Muse or dig deep through your deck with the Scarab God and all the scrying. As a bonus, you can also use the Scarab God to sort of reanimate any creature in your graveyard as a zombie token, as well as hit the table for a huge loss of life. The Scarab God does it all in this deck and is quite epic card. Necropotence being included should surprise no one. The triple black cost isn't that much of an issue for a two colored deck. The deck does have plenty of ways to draw into a ton of cards, but you can't go wrong with at least one way that works independently from anything else in the deck. The Liquory Tower is included for good measure. Remember that discarding anything while being in control of Necropotence means losing that card to exile. In any case, it's good to include because of how much you can draw once you get an engine going. As far as responses go, Pact of Negation, Fierce Guardianship, Swan Song, Negate, and Counterspell is a decent enough suite of counter magic to help protect your combos and your board state, as well as prevent an opponent from comboing off and stealing your victory from under your feet. Although, depending on the engine we have in play, we might not care if the board is wiped. In fact, it might benefit us for being the only one with creatures left. So, Damnation and Toxic Deluge are included as red buttons in the deck just in case. If we're facing against another horde deck that can overtake us, it's good to have these just in case. If we control Will Halt, then we'll at least have a ton of attackers with Decay left over, and we can then take out that player in the upswing. Cyclonic Rift is also included for this very reason, since it can be overloaded for both offensive and defensive youth. It's just such a great card in a deck like this one. Mystic Sanctuary helps recycle responses if it enters untapped. It doesn't take up a slot in the deck, plus having the island subtype means that we can fetch for it in a pinch. As for Mana Rocks, Soul Ring, Mana Crypt, Demir Signet, Arcane Signet, and Talisman of Dominance are good enough for the early to mid game since we're able to cheat in zombies. Plus the deck can generate explosive bursts of mana with the Urborg Coffers combo and or Phyrexian Altar. Besides, the deck's also running Nykthos Trying to Nyx which can take advantage of how massive the deck's devotion to black is. This land taps down for a ton of mana when online. 
The rest of the deck is just the rest of the lands. The deck's running all 7 fetch lands, underground sea, watery grave, feeded pools, ice tunnel, sunken hollow, drowned catacomb, tainted isle, sunken ruins, command tower, and ancient tomb as well as 5 of each snow covered basic lands due to Narfi. As with all of my deck techs, you don't have to run the more expensive mana sources like underground sea, mana crypt, etc. if you don't already have them, won't proxy them, or aren't playing online. You can very easily swap them out for budget substitutes and the deck will still work just fine. This brew is just an idea of how to build around Wilhelm the Rock Cleaver. Although the deck is very clearly a zombie tribal deck, it's not just about amassing and pumping a huge zombie horde. You can also assemble engines to drain the table of life, wipe the board, and potentially combo off for the win with cards that also work well independently of each other, but can end the game when working together. So I really like being able to overlap these three strategies into a single deck. I feel like Wilhelm is possibly the best zombie tribal commander for that very reason, but that's just my assessment. If you're interested in the deck list of this spicy brew of mine, you can find a link to it down in the description. I would like to thank all my patrons for supporting me and a quick shout out to all my higher tier patrons, the brewers, for their patronage. I'd also like to thank anyone using my TCG Player affiliate link. That also helps out the channel. And to everyone, thanks for watching this episode of The Brewery on the Commander Tavern. I'm the Manager Kirby and happy brewing.